We live in a world that is filled with conflict, with distrust, with hatred, with problems, with tumult, with bloodshed. Many of the reasons for these problems relate to the differences among human beings. There are differences. All you have to do is look in the newspaper, you'll see we're different in our culture, in our language, in our politics, in our religion, in many different ways. And yet, despite all these differences, there are certain things that human beings, all human beings, have in common. One of them is that we all eat. Now, there are several ways to eat. There are three major ways to eat that all involve getting food into our mouths. First way is to eat with knives, forks, and spoons. Second way is to eat with our hands. The third way is to eat with chopsticks. Let me ask you in the audience, what proportion of people do you suppose eat in those three different ways? Stephanie? What um, percentage? I know that China, like, where it's like in China, so I'm guessing that a vast majority of chopsticks. A majority of people with chopsticks? Other speculation? A third. A third what? A third of the people use chopsticks. Okay, and what about the other two, Joe? Pretty easy. I'd say that half eat with uh, knives and forks, and then the remainder eat their hands. Okay. Well, those are good guesses. According to Jay Locke in an article on how to use Chopsticks 101, published in, I'm not sure which year, about a third of all people eat with chopsticks, about a third eat with their hands, and about a third eat with knives, forks, and spoons. You all know how to use knives, forks, and spoons. You all know how to use your hands because you learned that as infants or toddlers. But some of you may not know how to use chopsticks. Anyone here? Yes. A few. They know or don't know. Do not know. Do not know. <laughs> some who do not know. All right. So my purpose now in the next few minutes is to demonstrate to you how to use chopsticks so that you can do that yourself. There are four steps in using chopsticks. The first is to prepare the chopstick. Second is to anchor the bottom chopstick. The third is to place the top chopstick parallel to the bottom chopstick. And the fourth is to bring the top chopstick down to the bottom chopstick. I'm going to now pass around chopsticks so that you all have a way to participate in this process. You can go ahead and open that and pass it around. I would be grateful. The first step, as I mentioned, is to prepare the chopstick. The way that you do the preparation when you receive your chopstick is you will take the chopsticks out of the protective paper covering, snap them apart with obviously the open part to the top, and then you're going to rub them together like this. Ryan, what do you suppose I'm doing? Not sure. Not, sure. Not, sure. Not to get the feel of the top. Yes, you get the loose piece of off so that you do not cure yourself in a splinter. All right, you've now seen step one of using chopsticks. Step two of using chopsticks will depend on anchoring the bottom chopstick in place. The way you do that is if you're right-handed, put your hand up like this. If you're left-handed, like this. Then you're going to take one of the chopsticks with the thick end facing your body, place it about an inch closer to you than the notch between your thumb and your hand, and then take your ring finger and pinion that chopstick firmly in place, like this. The other fingers will be free. Now I'm going to show you an image of this so that you get a basic idea. All right. Now, I saw Rachel's got it flying. Crystal, how about you? Stephanie looks OK. Jessica looks like you might move it a little bit further forward if you wish. Mm -hmm. Michelle, I would try. Diane, try to take this away from me, would you? Can't do it, right? It's nice and firm. Yours should be just as firm. Looks good, Diane. Kelly, that's fine. Make sure your other fingers are free there. OK, so we have now done step two of using top. Step three will depend upon your thumb, which is pointing upward and will act as a pivot to the fulcrum point for the chopstick, and your two free fingers, the middle finger and the index finger. So you're going to take the other chopstick in step three, place it parallel to the bottom chopstick on top of your thumb so it can move up and down like this. Looks good, Myron. Then you're going to grab the chopstick with the two fingers in front of the thumb, like this. I'll show you one. 
All right, Shavante, how are you doing there? Oh. Ms. Brian, you got it? June? Okay. Stage two. They're all good, Melissa. Andy, looks okay. Yes, Joe. I think Todd's uh, awesome. mastered this. Familiar sure. getting there. Oh, Tom. Gabe's got it. Sure. Yeah, he he did. Did. He's every day. Yeah. All right, that is step three. <laughs> you might think that the next, nah, the next cool. step is to pinch the chopsticks together, but that's erroneous. You don't move the bottom chopstick at all in, ste in step three. You only move the top chopstick down to the bottom chopstick. I'll show you here. Watch the bottom chopstick. It's not moving at all. Only the top one comes down to the bottom. Which is step four, moving the top chopstick down to the bottom chopstick. All right. Now you notice I didn't say I'm going to teach you to eat with chopsticks because I didn't bring any food for you. Uh, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> so, to review, incidentally, I should also mention that according to Chong, Jones, and Toth in The Story of Chopsticks, which is a book in the school library you journal, keep you may keep them. According to those people, the average Asian, East Asian child learns to use chopsticks by the age of four and a half, and virtually all of them, unless they are developmentally disabled have mastered chopsticks by the age of about six and a half or seven. And also, the information that I got to you about the percentage of people who use chopsticks is substantiated by Wang, Chan, Wang, and Wang in the use of chopsticks in Chinese children in a, an article in Child Care, Health, and Development. So, you've learned the four steps in using chopsticks. Preparing the chopsticks was the first. Anchoring the bottom chopstick was the second. Placing the top chopstick parallel to the bottom chopstick was the third. Moving the top chopstick down to the bottom chopstick was the last one. You've learned something now, some of you, that you didn't know before and which differentiated you from billions of people in the world. Now you have something in common that you didn't before. Wouldn't it be wonderful if some of the really significant differences among human beings were so easy to overcome? Mm.